Welcome to the video. In this video I want to take a look at one of the really, really minute control boards that are now available from Hobby King. This is the Open Pilot Mini CC3D version and as you can see it's absolutely tiny. It's less than 3 centimeters across and about 2 centimeters wide and just under a centimeter deep. Very small and very lightweight. Now we like the CC3D control board on this channel. You've seen it installed on 250 class quads. We've also put it in flying wings and we've also even popped an Atom version which was the previous small version inside 180 class quadcopters as well. The really nice thing is that this is even smaller and lighter and allows us to use it in even more applications. So here for example is a frame that we've already looked at on the channel and you can see how much more appropriate it is for these really small frame sizes. So what I want to do in this video is go through and just talk about how you wire this thing up. Uh, the good news is that it's actually got all the same connectors as the Atom, which is its uh, bigger baby brother. And the only difference is, is that the PWM connections that connect to your motor, there aren't those three servo style pins, there's actually a wiring loom. And we'll have a look at the looms that you get with it, because they have tried to make it easy to install it onto your model. I do have to say a very big thank you to Hobby King for taking the time to send this to us to have a look at. I'm also going to link into the videos for the CC3D, because we have an entire series on this board and everything that you can do with the other CC3Ds you can do with this little guy too. So let's just cover some of the highlights then before we get into the detail. First and foremost it is really small and light. It's the smallest CC3D fully featured that I've seen. If we look at it you can see it actually has a USB connector so we can plug the USB into it by default. At the bottom it has the PWM connections for the ESCs. You can see the little arrow very, very slightly on the case that, that that's the front of the board. We have our two uh, main and flexi ports so you can still do things like connect on-screen displays and Bluetooth. And then the other side is your RC inputs. It is identical, as I said, set up to CC3D. So here it is installed and plugged into the computer. We have it calibrated uh, for level and it's moving and working beautifully. So the next thing we'll do then is let's have a look at these harnesses and what you get in the package. Because rather than it just being bare wires that you have to crimp on, Hobby King have tried to make it easier. So the first thing we'll take a look at is how we actually connect up our receiver. So the receiver cable itself is this one here. It comes with all of the servo connectors at the end and it just plugs into this connector at the side. And then you have all of, all of the outputs. So there we have kind of ground at the top, then five volts and then channel one, two, three, four, five and whatever. I would recommend if you're going to use this receiver is get hold of something like an R616XN, the really small receiver that we looked at earlier in the playlist for the sub 200 quadcopters. That is a perfect companion for this little board. It means that you can have a receiver and flight control package that is really small. So for that to wire it up is pretty straightforward. Let's jump onto a slide. Here's our mini CC3D in the middle. Again, on the left-hand side is all of the connections for the receiver. My recommendation would be just pop your R616XN and just plug it into the first three cables. If we go back to the desk, you can see that the first three cables are already terminated into one connector. All the others are just the signal cables, so that is a perfect way to do it. Just plug your R616XN into that cable there and you've done all your receiver bits and pieces. The other cable that comes with it is this one here. And this one, again, has all of the right connections to plug your ESC leads into. And this one plugs into the bottom. So rather than those wires that we've just looked at there, this one plugs in like that. 
and then you can plug all your bits and pieces in. Now, let's just go back and we'll carry on with our diagram. So here's our mini CC3D in the middle, and we're going to assume we're putting it on a quadcopter here just for uh, simple purposes. The first connection to the first ESC, PWM1, we just go back to the desk, you can see here that PWM1 is actually this little white cable, and it actually connects, and it's the only one that does it, on the other end it connects PWM1 to the connector, and the other two connectors then are the 5 volts and the ground. So if we go back to our slide, there it is on the screen. The way we do it to connect it up is simply plug that lead into the ESC connector for motor one on the craft. This is assuming, of course, that the speed controller that we have here has the integral battery eliminator circuit that's going to supply the five volts to power the board. And then to connect the other motors, we just follow it round. So we just connect the signal wire of PWM2 to motor two which is going to be the front right-hand motor. PWM3 is then connected to the rear right motor, and PWM4 is connected to the rear left motor. So that is how you do it. So the cables are pretty straightforward and easy to use, and because they've got the right um, polarity on here, you can just plug the cable that comes from the ESC directly into it. Last thing to mention then is what about if you're using speed controllers that don't have an onboard battery illuminator circuit or you want to supply the 5 volts from a power distribution board that has that kind of functionality already in it. In that instance, then you don't have the ability to supply the plus 5 volts from one of the speed controllers that you're using. So in that case, all you do is you simply connect those two wires from the bottom of the board, that plus 5 volt and ground from down here, directly into a battery eliminator circuit that's supplying 5 volts. And that way, it'll work absolutely fine. So hopefully that's been a useful introduction to this board. Um, this is one I'm quite impressed with, and one that we'll be using in some of our future builds. The ability to have an open pilot CC3D in such a small package does mean now that even smaller planes as well as the small quads can have a really cute flight controller and fly without me having to worry about trying to fit it in. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.